Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you back here once again. If it's your first time checking out the show and you like what you see, you like what you hear, you like what you feel, you like what you taste, you like what you hear, did I say here? Pretty much I did say here. You know what to do, smash that like, hit subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below with all your thoughts, feelings, and suggestions, and I'll do my very best to ignore them and act like I'm bigger than everything that you have to say. Guess what, we're back again. We are back again with another unhinged, um, unrequired, unprompted well, not unprompted but you know you know what i mean somewhat unprompted rant from the legend that we know as brendan Shaw. for whatever reason he decided to go on his below the belt show and um turn a topic that i think was centered around joe rogan about his you know maybe the ufc needs to move on with him as a you know as a commentator and general personality attached to the ufc and kind of go on to up bigger and brighter things and maybe open up spots for former fighters to do some commentary you know standard observations nothing too critical i think in that regard but of course you know um joe rogan's resident nut hugger over here decided to jump into the fray and use as an opportunity to not only defend papa rogan's um you know reputation but also use it as an opportunity to deride and slam everybody that's come after him for his somewhat um some would say undeserved success i wouldn't say that because i think everybody you know regardless of what kind of leg up you're given you still have to go out there and do the work but the fact that he's unwilling to recognize why that would make some people upset is just you know part of his charm and part of what makes him um a very interesting character to kind of cover in general when it comes saw this content sort of stuff so i haven't watched the entire thing of course because you know i, I want to watch it once just get it over and done with so we're gonna watch it together i'm gonna play in full I'm gonna obviously have some pauses here and there. i'll do my best to keep the pauses up until over a minute because i know sometimes even with editing it can be a bit annoying people keep pausing stuff and talking but look it's brendan short there's gonna be loads of you know nonsense things be said so let's just play the video hear what he has to say and then i'll offer my commentary as we go along i'm sure it'll be dumb i'm sure it'll be full of laughs but you know what else do you have to do on this nice sunny beautiful day wherever you may be nothing of course so let's jump on it guys from i think yeah bloody elbow he's saying that joe rogan could and should be replaced you know how he missed one of the fight cards to go hunting he's hunting yeah so this guy wrote this whole article about why he uh all, the only reason this guy did this is because attention he wants, he wants clicks yep and obviously we're talking about i've never heard of the guy uh, as an MMA writer, it's tough <laughs> enough as it is. But whenever you include Rogan's name or any of our names, you're going to get clicks, and that's why he did this. I mean, you might as well say Rogan can do fucking magic. It, to say Rogan should be replaced, it's just such... It's like you're echoing to the, the, the world, into the galaxy, and you're not going to get any response back. Because mm. let's talk about it. So, obviously, Rogan has a hard stance on... You know, COVID, stuff like that, and however you feel about it. That's why he wrote this article, because obviously the left is going after Rogan right now, so it's a hot time to write a stupid piece like this. <laughs> and so he misses a UFC, all right? And he's like, girl, no one missed him. Well, we all missed him, because he's the, the best there ever is. Mm -hmm. So do you think by writing this article, it, the guy who is in charge of him is basically his boss is dana white he says the guy's obviously writing it for attention because he's a journalist um, apart from writing for places like i don't know the new york times the atlantic and these other publications do mma journalists in general court um notoriety and celebrity and attention that way anyway with their writing i don't really think they do right they normally write in order to get clicks for the website they're on whether it's bloody elbow mma fighting all the other ones right that's what basically they're in the game of they obviously there's a lot of clickbait on those websites some of the articles aren't even articles they're basically tweets that they kind of stretch out over you know the length of a page with ads and pre-roll and all this sort of nonsense cool but you wouldn't necessarily think that anybody on that site is trying to become a name unless they have their own podcast or they have their own show or they're a color or they're a colorful character i don't know there's not necessarily people that you necessarily think are trying to get notoriety of making this sort of opinion and again like i said in the beginning of the video this isn't a fringe opinion this isn't an opinion shared only by a small minority of people a large contingency of people who watch the ufc whether you're on reddit whether you're on twitter whether you're on other spaces spaces sometimes even on spotify and stuff or the little audio rooms they have or spaces on twitter sorry a lot of people have said you know joe rogan's commentary over the years has you know dwindled has kind of lowered in quality whether it's him getting worse at his job or the fans getting more educated and recognizing what good commentating is or being more knowledgeable of the sport in general and being able to call these bluff be like hold on why does he keep saying it's finished and it's not finished why is he calling for this thing and that's not happening do you know what I mean those kind of things and obviously with you know there's many many uh, youtube channels out there with people like you and i who just basically dedicate all their free time to watching mma so they're probably a lot more knowledgeable about the fighters who are fighting on a card and their form prior so it's no surprise that joe rogan being the age that he is and the experience that he has 
and the money he has in the bank that maybe he's not sitting at home in his mansion you know watching cards from like 10 five years ago to figure out who might do what in the main card that's happening in the ufc we're not we're not thinking that's gonna happen but to protect his honor and kind of jump to his defense in this way is odd because people are just calling him out because they don't think he's up to par as he was before or he's not up to par with the standard of people right now that's basically it it's not really anything to do with that and this whole left leaning thing again i haven't read the article yet we'll just jump into that later on from what i surmise and why i've read the full article but from what i was able to surmise from the little bits i was able to glance over it was mainly a critique on Joe Rogan's ability to be as good as everybody else in terms of commentating and being knowledgeable of the fighters and whatever it may be right and that may be going forward I think there's another point as well in there about giving the ex-fighters an opportunity to you know maybe commentate on cards a little bit more and just participate and not have Joe Rogan kind of be the main person they kind of go to because maybe with Joe Rogan's space being vacated they can rotate different people right in and out of that kind of hot seat get them trained up get them used to the camera get them used to the audience or to get the audience used to them and then hopefully go on when you owe your entire career to joe rogan you kind of have to do this for him or do you dana doesn't hate anyone more on this earth than people like this so do you think that when dana sees this article he's like maybe he has a point here of course not dana and rogan are best friends they came up together rogan is the most famous man in the ufc i would i would say the most famous period especially now with the Spotify deal, all the left coming after him. He's Yuck, become public enemy number one since Trump's out of the office. So when you talk about that name value as far as fame, there's nobody more famous on the planet than Joe Rogan in the UFC. So there's that, and he just happens, just happens to be the best <laughs> analyst that they have. There's But he's not. Let's just call it, but he's not. We know he isn't. There's many people I can list here can't think of off my head um who's a guy dan hardy right far better analyst than him again probably not fair because he's a you, you can tell he's a bit of a hardcore geek and um you know he spends every dying moment kind of analyzing every detail of fighting right but he's a far better analyst than joe rogan that's just one person i named on top of my head but to suggest that he's the best flat out is just a complete lie like why would you say that part of the reason why joe rogan's is incredible and his legacy is so rich when it comes to the ufc is because of how early he started right he's got that famous story about him wanting to just do it for free and just wanting to be associated with it and being a lifelong martial arts fan and want to see the sport grow and then over the period of time you know going on to do you know the other things in terms of comedy and podcasting and stuff it's just cool legacy wise right to see joe rogan with hair young looking sprightly without the you know hdh head and then slightly you know as we go on across the years you know he gets older and older but he's still kind of got the same verve and the same energy and the same passion for the fight for fighting and martial arts in general they did when he was younger so it makes complete sense why people would want him to be associated with the sport but now that is kind of progressing and it's going into a more professional there are say a period of its sort of time it makes sense why people would be asking why should we be paying our pay-per-view to hear a guy say he's finished he's finished he's finished and he's not finished <laughs> right like him, him screaming ecstatically about things or hyping people up or sometimes you do this thing especially when it's him in dc he'll start derailing dc and because dc just loves joe right dc has these man crushes especially when he's fans of people you know he loves dana he loves khabib he loves joe so whenever joe's around dc turns into a little child and he kind of can't stay focused and he can't even analyze the fights and they start talking about other things it just gets a bit weird and it? it's like watching a fight companion but you're listening and watching it at the same time so that can be a little bit annoying so the criticism again i think is fair but you know and you're brendan you have to you have to defend daddy that too you cannot tell me that when dc rogan and anna together that it's not a better quality product everybody knows this but this is gonna you know because again you got to separate rogan's opinions however you feel about it his political beliefs or his vaccine beliefs, or they took medicine like I'm uh, better in two days, which you guys hate. You got to separate that into the X's and O's, the black and white of his job, which he's very, very good at. And what he missed one because he's hunting. Yeah, man, he has a life. He has a life. Oh, you miss it because you're hunting. <laughs> so it's like, this would be the biggest article this guy's ever going to write. Nobody goes to this fucking page. I'm sure they'll write a hit article on this, but this is what, this is what, MMA, MMA media has to do. They have to, they have to come up with something to get clicks. They have to. This is what they do. It's not what you do, though. 
that's what all media does they have to do that it's just the way the system is run at the moment yes it's not correct and it's probably not the most ethical way to go about things it doesn't necessarily give us great content to read on news to kind of ingest and whatnot but that is just the way it is people generate these articles and spin things that people say in a way so people can click them and it's what it is the same thing that you do in your podcast you take outlandish takes and different positions on mundane topics happening in the culture because you hope people are going to tune in and watch your show buy your merch and do all that good stuff right that's basically why you're doing it and again it's quite rich coming from this guy as well because if you've been watching below the belt you'd know that for the most part when it comes to Brenner's MMA opinions he rarely if ever kind of has any nuanced takes that he's kind of been ruminating over it's always kind of a something that he's sort of responding against position like a, he's, yeah, it's usually a position he's taken against something people are saying or it's something that is widely said and he's repeating in his own way but it's, it's rarely a kind of interesting take that no one's really thought because he's watched cards and he's been analyzing things and he saw this fight when he was in two, in 2007 and compared to the way he said today it's rarely that it's always just regurgitating what he's heard in other shows right Luke Thomas being a good example of it it was always coincidental that whenever Luke Thomas would have a show and share his opinion some whatever way Brendan would have an opinion that even counted what Luke Thomas had to say or something that kind of echoed it so it's not as if he's the most original guy in the world when it comes to that sort of stuff anyway in the interest of just kind of being fair and seeing exactly what the article said because i'm curious because he keeps rabbing on about this article and about how it was talking about joe rogan's vaccine positions which i don't really understand why would that be a reason but hey let's just see what the article actually said about joe and his kind of you know quality and his um reliance or his importance to ufc nowadays okay there we go bloody elbow so this is the website right bloodyelbow.com the headline reads the ufc 266 showed that joe rogan can and should be replaced right cool you got the standard lineup there you got Anik, you got Rogan, you got Felder. So let's see what the article says. It said prior to UFC 266, there was a minor uproar. It seemed as if some fans thought it would, this event wouldn't have a big pay per view feel, or they'll be missing something. When the event came to to a close, the talk had been whisked away by the two whoever hysterical his journeys go to die. The big deal that was going to ruin the fight card, which featured two fights and a rematch between Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler, and was the absence of Joe Rogan. Yes, that's right. The non-attendance of a man who's often mocked for his overly theatric screams and inability to call when the fight is over was going to ruin UFC 266. Now, I understand how people thought that because, again, Roller, um, uh, sorry, Nick Diaz, Robbie Lola. Obviously, it's a fight that kind of harkened back to yesteryears of the UFC. Whenever you think of the good old days, quote unquote, of the UFC, you think of Joe Rogan. So it would have been nice to hear him kind of commentate on a Diaz fight. You know, it is what it is. I understand how people were excited about it, but again, it's not something that's going to stop you from not, you know, um, from not buying the pay-per-view or not watching the fight in general. And it continues. Shockingly, that did not happen. I saw no post-fight no post long into Rogan's presence. If anyone ripped their garments apart and ranted to the heavens, if only Joe Rogan had been on call, I missed it. Rogan's absence was a non factor had the news not been announced beforehand perhaps some eyebrows would have been raised at the start of the broadcast but that's probably the most that would have happened um all this to say that rogan who has missed two ufc pay-per-views to the day in a row one for his comedy tour and most recently for your hunting trick is replaceable i would go as far as saying that rogan ought to be replaced rogan might have just become the long-time employee the boss love but who other workers side eye with resentment he's the guy who shows up late leaves early does the least amount of work possible gets the highest amount of pay and reaps the rewards now i'm not too sure how true this is because i don't know how much exactly rogan Rogan gets paid he doesn't seem like that dude that would be trying to fleece the UFC out of money and stuff and the way that Dana operates that company and the way he like you know the lack of payment the fighters get I very much doubt that Dana's got him on some mad yearly salary regardless if he turned up or not but who knows because they're friends I don't know what the deal is so I'm not too sure if that resentment is going to be well placed and again he's kind of been grandfathered in if you're a young um, analyst broadcaster color commentator coming up and you're kind of looking at Joe with, with resentment you kind of go ahead give your head a wobble he's earned the right basically to claim a salary for for lack of a better term for life for what he's done for the UFC and with his association and how he's able to kind of build it I wouldn't have probably decided watching UFC if it wasn't for watching or listening to Joe Rogan podcast myself and I'm sure a few other people have done the same I'm sure a few other people have done the same when it comes to jujitsu and getting into martial arts so you know you got to be a bit fair in that regard but I could definitely understand if you are a long time fan of the sport and you're hearing all these other guys come in pro you know especially ex-fighters who are knowledgeable you know charismatic who have a command of the vocabulary when it comes to be able to just describe what's going on in the screen in a really colorful and simplistic way they may be hearing jorgen screaming like he does when he's on his fight commands isn't the way you'd want to kind of enjoy it you can kind of do it with your friends you know what i mean and again like i said maybe over the years people's overall understanding of fighting has kind of improved to the point where rogan's commentary just doesn't hit the same and that's okay that's completely okay but to suggest that this point isn't valid and it somehow um stems from hatred or jealousy because he's what anti-vaccines or because he likes to go hunting no one gives a shit i don't know i never really got the fact that I never really got the impression that MMA media didn't like Joe Rogan because he might be right-leaning or something. No one really cares. I don't know. Maybe I missed it completely, but I don't think people really care that way. Let's continue. 
while the other members of the UFC commentary team putting all the work in a week to prepare for the big event, not to mention also covering Tuesday's events at UFC Apex, Rogan's doing, well, something else. While John Anik learned down the proper pronunciation for a fighter name to help in the other members of the commentary team get background information on the fighters, their families at the camp, Rogan was also even hunting. So, okay, this guy's been a bit bit whiny here at the bottom. At the bottom. Another thing to consider is the one-sided commitment between the UFC and Rogan. The promotion wants Rogan to show up to maybe 12 weekends in a, of, a, of a year, no, 12 weekends a year to do his job. Rogan can't even commit to that light workload as we found out with him skipping the past two per view cards it seems to me this the UFC is prior to Rogan's life but the funny thing would be with this which I'm, I'm assuming is right imagine if he just gets paid a fee when he goes right so imagine if he gets paid let's say 100 grand to attend these things and you know he's got more money than God so he's fine with 100 grand and he generally loves hunting yeah he generally loves doing the podcast he says already like, if he could do the podcast all the time or and not do anything else he would do it so that's the fact isn't he only hurting himself by not going to these fight cards it's not as if he's like depriving fans of anything if anything he's not allowing himself to get paid for doing basically hardly anything according to this guy right he thinks he doesn't pay he doesn't do this he just phones it in if that's the case then it's you it's hurting him more than it's hurting anybody else i don't really see the the bother here it continues says and hey that's fine priorities change i'm sure doing the same thing over a number of years can get boring cool for someone who has the means to do whatever they want any day of the year but if most of us told our bosses the days that we we're going to work and then decided you know what you second four i'm going to skip today odds are they're good that they would replace us um and we and we would could, we would deserve it cool that's a good point but also a bad point because usually if you start a new workplace and there's somebody that's been in at the workplace that you're at for 20 plus years they're probably going to be able to get away a lot more than you would get away with they might be able to have a longer smoke break quote unquote longer lunches they might be able to kind of you know dip their fingers into the fryer a little bit more often than you are they might be able to have a chat on the store floor more than you it just is what it is the nature of the game it's unfair but that's just it what it is when you work somewhere for a long time and you sure improve then you are afforded certain privileges that other people aren't going to get and i think this is probably one of them even though he committed to 12 weekends he can't sometimes do it because he prefers to go hunting with um what's his name uh what's that hunter dude name doesn't matter one of those hunter dudes then fair play in it why not you would probably do the same thing if you enjoyed hunting as much as he did then he ends here rogan offers nothing that paul felder and michael bisbin cannot do and don't do already in fact these two who work a lot more than rogan on the ufc broadcast might be better suited of the job of color commentary because they are former ufc fighters and they can speak to what the fighters are going through and if all facets of the fight game no one is going to not buy a ufc pay-per-view because grogan's absent and if rogan can't give the ufc a hand for weekends a year it's time to reward the hard work of folks like bisping felder who are doing um are doing a let them have rogan's job that's how it would work in a real job so why not the ufc i don't know about that mate the ufc is proven it's not a real job because in real jobs you'd get paid you know fairly for what you do um they don't get paid fairly so to suggest that they're going to replace one of the most popular kind of faces on there with people that could do the job better just because you think they can't just because you think it's a fair thing to do is a little bit naive especially when you consider all the things the ufc has done prior but hey what do i know let's jump back in to see what brendan has to say before we continue on this is getting a little bit it's getting a little bit boring now but you know please bear with me clicks they have to this is what they do mm -hmm. you, you look at it from top with ariel look at it now oh negativity ne look at me guys negativity negativity all right that's what you have to go you probably don't have any talent because people making real moves, making real money. Talent. Sorry, I had to stop it there. Man. I had to stop it there. It's difficult. Again, I think to be fair to the guy, to be fair to the guy, if you had an entire forum dedicated to dissecting every bad thing that you did, every mispronunciation, every misstep, every um, not so accurate storytelling, um, you know, every rude interruption, um, sometimes breaking down the nonsensical, you know, bird brain post of your wife, taking the piss out of your brother and shit, right? You probably would have this score of resentment too, because if it feels like this feels like more of an opportunity for him to unload on, of course, the fire in the kids subreddit pick up the homeless cats pf changs all the way it's his way to obviously unload onto them and obviously throw some shots the, to the way of Ariel hawani who has kind of now been co-opted as the new C, uh, ceo or cfo or whatever it may be of pf changs at the moment <laughs> it makes complete sense why he's doing this as a reaction but it's difficult to kind of take serious because on one hand he will say i don't read all the comments i don't care what people say um i just keep 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 on keeping on i look at my bank account my car and my hot wife and stuff right that's what he basically would kind of say but then on the other side he kind of says 
what everything what people say doesn't matter because they're non-talented and all this stuff and it's like both of those things can't be true at the same time they really can't especially the talent because we all have to admit part of the reason why he's so unlikable i guess as a personality in general because i think a lot of people online who have been looking at who are kind of have that kind of unlikable personality you think of the trisha paytas's you know the tanner mogos the ethan kleins and stuff even kind of probably not a good example but yeah maybe ethan Klein is a good example now they kind of lean into the parts of them that people don't like and they sort of just have to come to a point in their career where they just sort of like realize and just accept people are just not going to like me because i am quite unlikable but there's going to be people that really like me who I'm just going to you know focus on them because they're going to be the ones basically allowing me to live the lifestyle that I live right so that should be how it is so I think that's what Brendan should do he should be like okay there's these people out there who are never going to like me because I represent nepotism in some way shape or form because there's some people who generally believe that he's only got where he's got to because he's pally pally with Joe Rogan which is fairly true it's not all the way true I'm sure it's not the only reason but that did play a huge part you don't not be friends with Joe Rogan and also work as hard as he does and not reap some rewards it's obviously going to help but he doesn't want to accept that you know it's all him it's all me it's all me and then when it comes to doing the actual job that he's meant to be doing whether it's kind of you know below the belt with this ufc show that's pretty shit again like i said it's a, it's a missed opportunity because he's a former ufc fighter top 15 heavyweight you know he was in the ufc at good in a good enough era to understand the game from both sides of things when it was kind of evolved when it was kind of still a little bit caveman -y, when it kind of evolved and when the kind of athletes were kind of getting phased out a bit and you had to be a little bit more of a martial artist all around in order to succeed he should be somebody who could offer some really great insights and the fact that he trained all over the place especially as heavyweight you go everywhere like he could be really good but he's not he's terrible right because he phones it in then when it comes to the stand-up comedy it's like come on you can't talk about talent and stand-up comedy and you can't talk about talent and then you've got your special that you've got now that's got you know whatever rating is got and again forget the rating let's say you got rating bomb but just watch that thing from start to finish and try and tell me this guy's talented that's doing stand-up he's not clearly he is he might be really good at being a podcast host and doing all that kind of stuff and you can't deny he's got a real ability to produce quote-unquote shows and put them together and you know he's fairly consistent doesn't necessarily miss too many shows seems to just keep the business running good ads all this sort of stuff yeah for sure like when it comes to that sort of thing you have to give the guys props but and again maybe some people would argue you know he started it at a time when everybody succeeded i don't care the fact that he's been able to do it for so long shows that he's obviously got a talent in that regard but in everything else he has basically shown that he's only got by because of the associations he's had and because he's been able to kind of game systems and help this you know I mean? let's call a spade a spade even the the good show he's got that through truck diaries that's gone to complete shit recently do you know what I mean? and that was really that was kind of the only thing in his kind of content arsenal or the shows that he kind of puts together that you'd say no that objectively is really good now it's gone to shit now they don't even eat next to the food truck they kind of go back to his studio and sit down and the fighters have to basically watch him stick his tongue out before he kind of puts food in his mouth and he's like what is that so the talent thing is just weird it's a bizarre stance to take and maybe a lot of it has to do with you know his failed football career and fighting career and stuff he was never quite talented to make that side of things so now that he's finally found success and this lane he's not going to let anybody kind of diminish his ability and success in some way shape or form i don't know who knows let's just play him and continue because i want this to end this is driving my head in honey is joe rogan ever negative am i ever negative in here very yes, rare. You are. Come very on. very come rare. on come on but if you don't have talent that's what you have to do it'll definitely get more clicks for sure and no one that's ever been in joe rogan's spot or has competed in the ufc has ever thrown shade at joe rogan it's only people that report on the weather, talk shit on others that have actually been in the store. What is that? Because well, uh, continue... there's a mutual level of respect for those of us that have paid the price. And Rogan hasn't, but everybody realizes the skill and talent that Rogan has and the credibility he brings to the sport and what he's done for the sport. So it's people, these soy boys that are outside the <laughs> realm that try, you're, bro. All these guys, all these journalists, all this bullshit website, you're not even in the club. As Chris Brown says, you're in the line trying to get in the club. You're, you can never get in the club. You're not in. So what they do is, is the, the line of people outside the club who need to be relevant and talk shit to get clicks because nobody's paying attention. Unless you book some big name fighter or you have 17 fighters on your show, nobody gives a fuck about your personal opinion. So you have to somehow muster something trying to figure it out stir the pot because everything you've ever done has never worked out for you <laughs> that's how these guys operate and it doesn't end well for any of them because they don't have any talent nobody's paying attention so they have to book big guests or they have to talk shit about joe rogan just to get views because if they get on here and rant to a camera like i do for an hour nobody listens it's a weird take to have in it. It's a weird take to have because 
the reason why people again I understand what he means. I get the gist of it. It must be annoying for a guy that looks like Brendan to have people like Ariel poking fun at him because in any other walk of life, you would have just threw him off the highest building somewhere, right? And kind of shut his um, shut his trap up that way. But he can't nowadays. He can't get violent. He can't get aggressive because if, if he does that, he's immediately lost. So he's kind of have to fight back and, you know, in, in this way, which he's obviously not really good at. But the weird thing to say about this sort of stuff is, He's trying to diminish the role that the MMA media have to play in the success of the UFC in general or in martial arts, in, mixed martial arts in general. Most of these fighters, most of these organizations wouldn't be where they are without the coverage that these people give them. Of course, they create the product. They put it out there. I understand, I understand. But you still need these publications and these platforms to talk about the fights you put on to make stories out of nothing because it keeps you guys in the headlines and it reminds people that you're still around because if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. That's one thing. And then when it comes to him saying, oh, people, they can't do what I do, rent into the camera for an hour. Yeah, they can't, most of them, probably because they don't want to do it. And maybe because what you're doing isn't that great either. And also because you've kind of been afforded the opportunity to do that because you have built up, um, what's that word called? I won't say cloud, but you built up some reputation beforehand from your association with Rogan, your association with the UFC, that people would want to hear what you have to say. Those MMA journalists haven't. They're just the guy that's writing on a blog about a sport or about a, a, a an organization or about a hobby that they love, right? And they're trying to obviously garner some clicks, get some attention that way, but that's how they're starting. You got your start sitting across from Rogan and having him tell you you should quit fighting because you're not that good at it, right? And then now that's segued into obviously what he's doing now. And those guys are getting their start by writing on blood, the bloody elbow, right? About flipping, is, is, is Shevchenko the greatest ever or something, right? Another article about that. Cool again both things aren't necessarily the greatest way to come into anything cool but they're great ways to get in right so i don't really understand what he's trying to get at in this regard i really don't it's a really bizarre way to kind of interpret the situation that he's going through but again like i said i think most of it has to do with the non-stop abuse that he gets online um and then there's obviously a part of him that understands and knows that you know you, you don't really you haven't really earned the right to speak the way you have to speak or no you haven't really earned the, your place and where you're at so he's kind of constantly having to prove himself his position and that sort of stuff i don't know i don't know it's just a weird place to be in general who knows because they've never walked the walk they've never been in the fire they're reporting on the storm i've been in the storm what's the storm thing did he recently watch a documentary about the weather or something or tornadoes or something huh? joe rogan hasn't been the storm, but he's witnessed more storms than anybody in the world. He's also a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's also an inspiration. Black, black belt like you, huh? To millions and millions of people. He's also made millions, hundreds of millions of dollars off a of podcast. He's an entrepreneur. These other guys work for the man because they have to. Because they don't have talent. They don't have creativity. They don't have the work ethic to hang with guys like me and Joe Rogan. So that's where this hate comes from. Me and Joe Rogan. And nobody fucks with it. Name one person in this line of work, whether it's entertainment, He's podcasting, stand-up comedian, journalism, that can make a living off hating on others. Name one guy where they get longevity with that. It will never work out for you. Never. You might get a, a small group of people like, yeah, this is cool, man. Fuck Joe Rogan. Fuck Shab. Cool, man. But the majority of the world likes positive shit. They like they like people that do. They Have you watched the news recently? Do you think they're the world majority world that puts the shit? They like people that put out that people don't miss podcasts. They like they they recognize hard work, and that's what brings people. That's what people gravitate towards. Because we all have that friend who's negative, Nancy. And how's his life going? Lights are cut off. Can't feed the kids. Trying to figure shit out. What you put out in the world, you get back, man. So this guy. Congrats, buddy. You did it. I bet we never hear from him again. You know what? I'm done, man. I can't be bothered. His, you get the point of it anyway. He's upset. He's angry. But again, we read the article. We saw what the article actually said. It wasn't that deep. Um, you're allowed to criticize and say that you don't think maybe Joe Rogan is the best guy to commentate on the UFC nowadays because there's maybe far more deserving, more talented, more capable, more interesting people around. It just is what it is. Same thing you'd say about fighters, right? It's no disrespect to say that maybe Conor McGregor isn't the guy that he once was when we first saw him burst onto the scene. 
It's not to say that he's diminished. It's not to say that he couldn't flip in, you know, destroy 99% of people on the earth right now. But to say that he isn't the guy that he was and to pretend that it's not happening is, you know, stupid. You know what I mean, it's insane. It's proper smooth brain thinking. But again, I understand it from his point. You know, Rogan gave him his career. Rogan gave him the ability to make hundreds of millions or hundreds of thousands and going into the millions off of a podcast because he got him on a show. He was one of the, what, what, I forgot what year it was, but he was one of the most frequent guests on that show. I didn't even realize on Joe Rogan podcast, right? So he can't deny that, that association, that friendship he has with that guy is the reason why he's where he is at the moment. Yes, he might have still got there with his hard work and dedication. I don't think so. But it did play a big role in where he's got to go to. So I understand him kind of capping super hard for Rogan in that regard. But all the other stuff is mostly just because he gets loads of abuse online. Most of it is warranted. A lot of it isn't, but I think most of it is um, just because of so how unlikable he is in general. And maybe because deep down people just see him and they're reminded. Because I think it sometimes might be that way as well, psychologically wise, when it comes to some of these people in a homeless cat's place. Maybe they see him and he represents somebody they grew up with in school who just kind of skirted through life got away with nonsense do you know what I mean um and was able to kind of afford all the luxuries and privileges and gifts and rewards and jobs and stuff that they probably should never have got because of how garbage of a human there was and I don't know my final mission with that just be like it is what it is isn't it that's life there's gonna be loads of people in the world who are in your eyes maybe undeserving of their success and whatnot um but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. It can be annoying, but it's just the way it is. And I think on Shorb's side, he just needs to get to a point where he understands and accepts that there's going to be a large majority, not a large majority, I'm going to say, there's going to be a, a contingency of a contingence of people, a group of people who are just never going to like him for whatever reason, whether it's him, his opinions on COVID, stand up. Um, his jokes, presenting the podcast, I don't know, whatever. They're going to have an opinion why they don't like the guy and it's never going to change. They were going to look for any opportunity to kind of kick him, right? Kick him while he's down whatnot. Just needs to ignore it, really ignore it because he doesn't. He pretends he does and he says he doesn't read comments, he reads them all the time. He says he doesn't see stuff, he sees everything. He needs to kind of ignore it and just keep it moving because he's got a great position. He essentially gets paid to do a mediocre, you know, MMA fighting podcast, gets paid to do a pretty terrible incarnation of the fire and the kid which was brilliant before now it's garbage unwatchable um he still gets a check from showtime he still does all these other things he does right it's pretty much a fixture in the kind of la podcasting scene whatever industry they've got going on there he's got life pretty good drives a purple porsche or whatever car he's got at the moment now great house good little family like live life enjoy it, do you know what i mean don't try and fight everybody internet because you're never going to win and all this kind of like talent hard work thing and people make his success it doesn't work like this it doesn't work because people on the internet they're not you know the people doing all the stuff that he's doing they're like the one percenters most of the people watching this sort of stuff are just you like you and i just working the job watching this stuff consuming it we're always gonna have an opinion it's not always going to be good it's not always going to be nice but we're always going to have one so to suggest that everybody should be a positive watcher and and listener of the things that you do is a little bit naive if you look at the how the internet is basically you know built and what succeeds on there and what doesn't succeed but again what do i know and he probably knows a lot more than me when it comes to this sort of stuff and i'm sure he will probably ignore most of the good you know critical kind of honest feedback people give him it is what it is that was another kind of brain inducing hurting that's why i stopped doing these flipping videos because they just hurt my brain man it's just so unbelievably dumb but hey it is what it is if you liked what you see smash the like um, give me a subscribe of course if i earned it and of course leave me a comment let me know do you think brian's i think brian do you think brendan's tripping am i tripping is Rogan the best of all time? Let me know in the comments down below. Peace.